hours away from the uh, flight. I went from LAX to Guangzhou and then Kathmandu. Um, I got my flight with China Southern. Um, pardon my promise, I could have gotten a cheaper flight with China Eastern, but I will never fly that airline again. Uh, they're, they are a, a disaster waiting to happen. Um, so anyways, uh, starting in Kathmandu, we're going to go to Lakla and then that starts the trek with G-Adventures from Lakla to Mount Everest Base Camp. So uh, part of my preface of this is I wanted to show you my research. I spent about a month researching everything. I'm a big bargain hunter, as some of you know. So um, I needed to pack really light and I wanted to keep my trip cheap just for the hell of it. So um, I did a, did a bunch of shopping. I found some good deals. These are in US dollars. So I'm going to show you what I'm bringing on my trip. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is my little staging area. It looks like a mess, but there's a, a method to it, believe it or not. So I'm bringing these big Ziploc kind of uh, plastic packing bags. They're not the vacuum ones, but um, they do an amazing job compartmentalizing your clothing. And the good part too is, um, especially when you're backpacking, it makes it a lot easier to uh, find your 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 belong your particular items of clothing. And notwithstanding that, when your as your clothing gets dirty, it doesn't make all of your other clothing uh, smell and what have you. Um, really important, I got a bunch of passport photos, they recommend bringing them. I'm not sure if I'm going to need them because you can get an EV so we can get there, but I am bringing them and uh, the good thing with that is I went to Costco and they're only five bucks. So don't go to the drugstores and other places where they're going to charge you, you know, 15 and 20 bucks. You can get them at Costco for five. Uh, what else? Sunscreen, I'm bringing miniature things, these miniature uh, sunscreens. Because that way, as I use them, I can throw them away, and as I traverse on my, or as I progress on my trip, the good thing is uh, my packing, will, my baggage will be lighter. Uh, these I got for free, and this one I got at the 99 cent aisle in uh, Target, where they have a whole bunch of little mini travel things. This is my mishmash of packing things, so a couple of small tubes of toothpaste, uh, comb, I, I actually bought Axe body spray. I don't normally do that, but I did this time. It was a whopping 99 cents. The toothpaste was free, thanks to samples. I always bring vitamin C, uh, these uh, emergency packets on my trip. Uh, my blemish stick. I'm still vain. Extra memory card. Uh, definitely a must. Um, I went to Daiso, if you guys have that where you are. It's like a, do a Japanese dollar store where I got these miniature, well, not miniature, but these individualized uh, serviette or napkin packets, which I think are great. And also I got uh, cl clarifying or cleaning towelettes as well as these flushable ones uh, for, you know, washing your hands and things like that. That way you, uh, you know, you're not messing up their environment by putting all this litter there because hopefully these biodegrade really quickly and they're um, going to be very useful, I think. Um, I went to Harbor Freight Tools. I got this really rugged tactical flashlight, which is a big must. You turn it on. It comes with batteries. It's super bright. I shopped eBay and everything, but for what you get, this is definitely the best deal, um, in my opinion. About $10. Don't forget the universal adapter. I got this for free. This one's a really cool one because it's got USB attachments in it. Solar battery pack. Uh, I was about 10 bucks too on eBay. It's okay. I mean, I don't know how great it works, but uh, whatever. Um, we're going to be walking a lot. I don't want to also be wearing long sleeves if it's hot, but... I do want to protect myself from the sun, not just sunscreen, so I did buy these arm sleeves. You can also get them at Daiso. I got these on eBay from China for $0.99, cents including um, including shipping, believe it or not. I don't know how they can afford that. What else do we have here? Oh, yeah. Uh, I invested in some good quality batteries. Um, you can I, you don't need to do that. You can really go to the $0.99 cents store and get it up, to be honest with you. Packing for clothing. I got two long sleeve items. Uh, I got both of these from Target and the clearance aisle. Now, they are the moist... You may be wondering, why did I buy all these, this clothing? Well, they say on this trip, from what I've seen in other blogs, don't wear cotton shirts uh, because you're going to be sweating and they're going to smell and you, there may be nowhere to wash. So, what everybody's suggesting is, and I'm suggesting, is to wear this these uh, uh, moisture-wicking uh, materials, which, you know, you see everywhere now. Walmart and Target, all the gym clothes are now made of this moisture-wicking material. And the cool thing is, it's, it's even cheaper than cotton. Um, these are normally 30 or 40 bucks each. I got them in clearance for about 10 each. These are long sleeves. I got two of them. Um, I'm just going to wear some old shorts and old long pants for my sleeping clothes. 
bringing two pairs of shorts. This one I already have, I made in nylon, so it should breathe fine, it should uh, clean easy. And I got this uh, camo kind, which is stretchy and travel style from uh, Costco for like a whopping $11, so you can't go wrong with that. So two shorts, uh, an extra t-shirt. You can see Brutalume has this moisture defense, wicking, um, odor, odor t uh, fighting technology in case you want, you're, you're, you're worried about stinking. This is like five bucks, not on sale. And I got these at JCPenney. Also two more moisture wicking t-shirts for, uh, I think it was six bucks. I got a killer deal on it. Socks. Um, I got two long wool pairs. I'm only going to bring one of them. That's the one you're seeing for a whopping $3.88 at Target clearance. Um, and then at Costco, I got five pairs, which I'm not going to bring them all. I'm going to just bring a few, maybe two or three of them. Also, we'll blend. Um, not as thick, so probably more comfortable and not too hot for 10 bucks. You can't kill, you can't beat that. You may be wondering, what are these little packets here? Uh, these packets are basically these little silicone packets, which, uh, silica gel that, uh, absorb moisture which when you, when you buy items at the store, usually they have them in them, everybody throws them out. I had a few lying out, lying around, so I thought I'd keep them because they're gonna come in handy. I'm gonna just throw them into my backpacks. Um, so hopefully they, they provide some sort of, you know, moisture protection. I got this uh, parka, it's like a zip up hoodie. Also very light, very moisture uh, uh, wicking kind of thing, whopping 11 bucks. Also JCPenney. Um, can't go wrong with that. And my, one of my best purchases are these convertible pants, which you always see people wearing. These are the ones that have the detachable legs on them, so you can uh, turn them into shorts. They're usually like 60 or 70 bucks if you go to REI, but I got these at also Costco for a whopping 20 bucks. And I got this awesome, uh, very light coat that also serves as a raincoat uh, for, I think, 20 bucks at Costco. Do do do. Let's go over here. Got to bring my noise canceling headphones. I won't bother breaking them out of the bag. Those are they're a bit bulky, unfortunately, but I'm gonna bring them for the flight. Uh, I got those on eBay for like 20 bucks. They do a decent job. And since I we are very restricted on what we can bring in terms of weight, instead of bringing my big fat travel pillow, I got this dollar fifty travel pillow inflatable from Daiso. And for those of you wondering if it's gonna be good quality, the good thing with Daiso. That Japanese company is they give you it's like a dollar store, but they sell quality stuff So you don't have to worry about uh, You know using up or you know things breaking after one use so I tried it yesterday It's actually really good quality. So that was a dollar fifty and of course I wouldn't go anywhere without my One of my favorite watches my G-Shock. Uh, this is my one of my favorite watches because it adjusts to the time automatically based on the atomic clock in the time zone you're in and also uh, it's solar so you never have to worry about a battery going shit on you so that's kind of it oh let's not forget the bag um i wasn't i'm not really a backpacker so i ended up buying a backpack for this trip even though i may not totally need to use it from what i hear but i got a 75 liter bag um this is the size of it you can kind of see my hand it's basically the you know probably about 32 33 inches tall it's a 75 liter bag. I got that from Amazon. And if you're wondering, well, that doesn't tell me much. Actually, it's actually made by Amazon, if you can believe that. I don't know if you can see that a little emblem on it. Not really. It's actually made by Amazon Essentials. And I got it with shipping for something like $42. So I got a killer deal on that. And it's got, it got amazing reviews. So as you can see, um, packing on this was, it was a, it was a long haul going all these going to all these stores, but I actually really enjoyed the process. Um, so now I'm going to put everything together, and let's hope it can all fit in there. I think it can. The good thing with these moisture working things is that they're very, uh, very, very thin and very light. So that's it for now. Um, I will be in touch with you guys later uh, as we keep documenting this trip. Thanks. So there are a couple of streets. Uh, where they sell tons of shit, like all your camping. As you can see, I got a good uh, view into trekking just going on the street because they're resurfacing it. I hope they're resurfacing it. Um, the Adidas held up pretty good. Now, I myself am looking for one last minute item. Uh, but you can see everything's like 
Everything's a knockoff, but to give you an idea of the prices on things, like you can get these beads bracelets for like about a dollar fifty. Too much noise back there, so. But these streets just keep going on and on. There's another series of streets. I won't bother showing that to you. Um, but yeah, you can get like a windbreaker, a fake North Face windbreaker for probably like $15. Good quality. A fleece jacket for eight or nine dollars. Um, a sleeping bag for maybe 20. But you can just see these stores keep going on and on and on. They usually open at about 9 in the morning and close at about 8 or 9 at night. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm back from my trip now, so I thought it would make a lot of sense to put a second part of this video uh, because I need to add some things since I've actually gone and experienced what it's like to go there in terms of what you should pack and how you should be the most efficient on your you know trip to Nepal. So there are a few things I forgot in the initial video you just watched. Number one is shoes. You're gonna be putting well over 100 kilometers, maybe 200 kilometers on your shoes walking. It's gonna be a very foot intensive trip. So there's really not much more important than your footwear. Now before I left, I was really struggling with what kind of shoes do I bring? I'm not a hiker, big hiker. So when I do hike around here in LA, I'm usually just wearing regular running shoes, uh, but you can't really do that on this kind of trip. And so I'm not the type to wear hiking shoes. I know a lot of people wear hiking shoes daily even, but I wasn't sure whether to bring hiking shoes or something a bit more simple. So I opted for both. So they have these days, obviously hiking shoes. I, I opted for these Morel shoes, but they also make these things these days called uh, trail runners that's basically like running on trails and i wasn't sure which to bring i wanted to bring the most comfortable shoe for me i had the misconception or the preconceived notion that wearing hiking shoes would be uncomfortable for many kilometers i always thought they're going to be heavy inflexible and such and so i was trying to figure out a way not to uh, wear running shoe pardon me hiking shoes now there are different types of hiking shoes they have these regular hiking shoes, which are shoes. They have hiking boots, which obviously ride higher up and encumber your ankle. There's a big school of thought between which kind to bring. I'm going to probably do a separate video on that. But in a nutshell, I didn't know which to bring. Uh, I did a lot of research, so I opted to bring both for more than one reason. The biggest reason, though, was you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't want something bad to happen in your shoes and you not to have a backup. So, since I wanted to bring, try running using trail runners, but I wanted to not screw anything up, I bought these hiking shoes and I bought these trail runners. These are Morel hiking shoes. I bought them at Nordstrom Rack. Nordstrom Rack, if you have it in your area of town, is a great store for shoes because they sell, you know, brand name shoes and they are fantastic with their deals. I think I ended up paying about $50 for this pair. And what I also got at Nordstrom North Rack were these pair of trail runners by Adidas, and they were fantastic, super comfortable. Ultimately, on the trip, since I'm back now, I can tell you I did wear these for the majority of my trip in terms of walking. Uh, when we would get to the tea stations and chill out for the evening, I would put on my trail runners. And now that I'm looking back on it, I would still, t I would still bring both. You should always have a backup pair of shoes, just my opinion. However, for the day-to-day -day of walking and the, the grunt of walking on the, these, the pebbled path and where there is no path, you definitely want these. Why? Uh, yes, they are a little bit heavier than trail runners, but the most important part is the soles are uh, more sturdy. They're not sturdy to the point that the shoe is inflexible, although I do recommend before you go on your trip, wear your, shoe, wear your new hiking shoes for a couple of weeks so that they can kind of get broken in because you don't want to break shoes in on your feet while you're actually in the hike and you don't have sore feet. Because sometimes you buy shoes and they just don't fit your foot properly. Like your the, the shape of your foot's not the right match for the shoe. This happened recently when I went to North Korea. I bought a new pair of New Balance, you know, walking and running shoes. And after two days, for some reason, 
the right shoe was making my foot hurt. And I didn't know why. In fact, it was making my whole leg hurt. And I had a limp for most of my trip. And it was just because there was something off about the shoe. So nonetheless, do get a hiking shoe. I did not opt for the boot. A lot of people talk about using a hiking boot for the trip. I'm not used to wearing boots, things that go above my ankle. And when I tried the boots on at, at the different stores, they just didn't feel comfortable to me. And I just wanted to be most comfortable. People do say it gives you more ankle support, which is probably true because it's very easy to roll your ankle. I definitely rolled mine a couple times, although I didn't hurt myself. So it's kind of up to you. I just didn't, I thought with all the walking, I didn't want to risk blisters on my ankles or what have you. So I did use this hiking shoe by Morel for about 50 bucks and the trail runners as a backup. Um, I don't think I would do trail runners for the whole trip. You could try a day with them, but the, the path, there's not so much of a path, but there's so many uneven stones that your foot feet will be killing you because this has a sturdy sole to it. So it'll help your foot not be twisting and contorting in funny directions while you're walking. Whereas the trail runners, while more sturdy, while also sturdy, they're not as sturdy, they're more flexible. So your feet may get sore. Fortunately, both of them have amazing toe protection, which is the other thing you need to know when you're getting your, buying your shoes. So definitely buy your shoes here in the United States or wherever it is you're traveling from. You can buy them in Kathmandu. However, there are a lot of knockoffs over there and you don't want, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with fakes necessarily for some things, but not shoes. Because the last thing you want is a, a shitty pair of shoes done and next thing you know the, the sole is peeling off of it because the glue is crappy. That is the last thing. That's what I'm saying the, the shoes are really important. Other part of the thing I wanted to mention were hiking poles. I didn't think to really bring hiking poles. I did look into them here but I didn't want to buy them here and have to lug across the ocean with them because they are long even though they have collapsible ones. So I ended up buying them there. Just Alright, so a note about uh, buying things over in Kathmandu. You can totally buy everything in Kathmandu. You can literally fly from wherever you're flying to with just your passport and your credit card and some money and buy everything from your shoes to your shirts, to your socks, to your flashlights over in Kathmandu. And guess what? Probably most of it's gonna be much cheaper than you're gonna get back home. In retrospect, would I have done that? No, I think I would have still had the comfort of buying stuff here, but there are some things you can pick up there uh, that are much cheaper there. For example, if you wanna buy a down jacket. Now I went in May, I didn't think I needed a down jacket, although pretty much everybody else in my group had one. I didn't bother. I thought layering was the better way to go. And for me, it worked out. Uh, maybe I'm okay with the cold because I'm from Canada or whatever, but a lot of people bought or brought their down jackets with them. I didn't bother, but again, you can get one there for as low as like 20 or $30 for a down jacket. Now, the other thing that I wouldn't do though is get your shoes over there because a lot of them are knockoffs and the knockoffs can have problems like the soles can get ripped apart or ripped off of the, the shoe itself and that's the last thing you want. Now, the thing I didn't bring that I also still wouldn't bring but I would buy over there are hiking poles. I didn't get to talk about hiking poles earlier. I wasn't sure if I would want hiking poles. I've never really used them in my life so I thought they'd feel unnatural. But when I got there, the hotel manager uh, gave me his for whatever reason. It was really nice and he just gave me his hiking poles and I'm very glad I did. And a friend of mine who didn't, he started the hike without them. He actually was really regretting it. He fortunately found a little stop along the way where he bought some. Uh, you can buy them at home. I just think that they're kind of a pain in the butt to tr you know bring across an ocean, these hiking poles, although they do have collapsible ones. You can definitely get them there for very cheap. They even sell a lot of used ones. I sell them for as little as nine or $10 US. So hiking poles, I would get over there for sure. Uh, I, bought a, I bought a couple more pairs of uh, long pants, really nice ones for also like eight or $10, even a rain jacket. If I could go back, I bought a rain, my rain, light rain jacket here. I would probably buy it there. They have these, I think they're knockoff North Face rain jackets with Gore-Tex. Also same deal, like nine, $10. You can't go wrong and they're really nice. Now, the other thing I didn't talk about is sleeping bags. You may be wondering how come I didn't bring a sleeping bag. I wasn't sure if I would need one, but nonetheless, you can also rent them there. And on my, with my tour group, I just rented one. I think I spent like, if I'm not mistaken, $20 for the whole 15 days. And I think they're 110 or 110, 20 uh, degree bags. I forget, they kind of rate these bags based on how warm they keep you. But yeah, even though I went in May, you do need that sleeping bag at the, at the tea houses, uh, especially as you get further up, because it starts getting pretty cold in the night. 
and uh, you know, it's nice to have your own little bag to sleep in. And that's one thing you can definitely rent there without being encumbered with bringing your own. Although you can totally bring your own. I have a philosophy of bringing as little as possible. So you can rent your sleeping bag. So those are the three big things. Don't worry about forgetting anything because you can 100% get it over there if you've missed anything. Number one. Number two is get your shoes back at home. Get good shoes. I didn't bother with waterproof ones, by the way, for a few reasons, which I'll get into in another video. And uh, number three, sleeping bag and hiking poles. You can get them over there as well as everything else. Oh, and one more thing I want to mention before I cut the video loose, which is uh, I brought a flashlight. And I would suggest not only bringing a handheld flashlight, but if I could go back and do it again, I would definitely get one of those flashlights that strap to your head uh, with the flashlight in the front. Because what you're, you'll find at the tea houses, there's really no light in the nighttime. They turn off all the lights as electricity is not a luxury over there. And let's say you want to go to the bathroom, it's very hard to go to the bathroom holding a flashlight in one hand and trying to open doors and pull your pants down and who knows what else you need to do. And then how do you wash your hands holding a flashlight, right? So, and I'll trust me, you're gonna find, you're gonna experience the awkwardness of trying to go to the bathroom in the night when there's just a hole in the ground and you're trying, you can't even wash your hands. So bring, you can bring a handheld, but definitely bring a, a, a forehead mounted head flashlight as well. So that's all I wanted to add to the video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the uh, listing below. I'm happy to answer those comments, I always do. And I hope this has been informative to you. And don't forget to subscribe and like. And I'm definitely gonna do a separate video on the merits of trail runners versus hiking shoes on another video, so stay tuned for that. So thanks for listening, and I hope this video was helpful for you when you plan your uh, base camp trip as well. Thank you.